So, what are we doing here? Okay, got the chassis handled. A little bit of grunt work still left on that. Electronics, whatnot. It would be waterproof. Not going to worry about that. And now I'm going to strip these axles down. I'm going to spare you the details. It's nuts and bolts, guys. I'm going to strip the axles down. Uh, take everything off them. Everything. Open them up. Take all the gears out. When I get to that point, I'll show you the gears and stuff so you can kind of see them and see how that they're arranged. These are 2.5 millimeter screws. The Reva ones are 3 millimeter. So you can't put them back together using these. And these will slide in and out of that hole. Not easily, but they will. The links are in there pretty tight. They're almost like a press fit. And what I would not do is drill these out. Uh, you might be inclined to just put a clearance hole in there for 3 millimeter screws, but uh, what I suggest is, even though it's a little more tedious, is to just machine, just to put the three millimeter in and just cut threads with it as you go through. Uh, it gives you double security, and it gives you maximum strength because you won't be removing any material from this relatively small part. When you take the two screws off, take the knuckle off, you're going to notice these little spacery things fall out. Later, when you are trying to put these back in, you are going to be learning new curse words. A little pro cat tip, put a tiny dab of axle grease or silicone grease or whatever you want to use, just a tiny bit, and then put them back in the hole, and then that will make them stay there. Otherwise you'll be like, ah! Another little thing that popped into my head, which is absolutely critical, is to rework the way these are on here cut the wire tie very very carefully massage this around till it's completely upright if it breaks cut off the heat shrink resolder it okay carefully bend it up so that it is completely vertical then lash the yellow one to it so that it, these are as flat as possible to the side of the can what's going to happen is, is any kind of tire rub on something sticking out like that is just not good. I understand why they did it this way so they'd have equidistant lengths and all that good stuff. It, it doesn't work for the actual in the real world kind of running on these. That's an absolute mod. Okay, I just want to show you, once you get your screws out of this and you can take it off, Okay, this holds pins here and here. See the pins holding the gears. This gear comes out first, and this gear. I'm going to put the pin back in just because uh, i got to mess with the uh, bearings on these. I'm take the bearings out and put them in here. These do not come off bearings. So I'll show you a little more on that. This has got to come apart. So a little news flash when I went up to the house to get uh, more batteries for the camera. The uh, RC four-wheel drive wheel wideners arrived. Okay, they fit the wheel okay. They do not engage all the way. Easy fix for that is to put an O-ring around them. I don't know if they include O-rings. I didn't see any in the packaging. I tore one package open. I see washers. I see barrel nuts. This little groove right there would be ideal to put a washer on. I'm not sure. I, I used to have some washers around here. I've got so much stuff. Maybe I can find them. And then that way you get a really good contact patch. You'd get this outside to here a little bit. Um, there's no real way to drill that down or anything. It's a hex shape, right? Now, on this end of it, okay, the issue is the stock hexes come with a little step. And there's two ways to approach this. You can take this off and you can grind it flat. That's one way to do it. The other way to approach it is to drill this out just a little bit so that this will fit in there. But as you can see it's a two level step. You've got one level and then you've got another level. If I drill it out to the full size 
seems to me like I'm losing a lot of meat, a lot of purchase, a lot of metal to metal contact. I really think the way to approach this is to grind these babies down, so I'll be taking these off too. Here's some more micro detail. Once you take the grub screw out, right, tiny little grub screw, you don't want to lose it. This should just slide off. On a brand new one, this will slide right off. However, if your grub screw has ever gotten loose, ever, which it will, during your run time, it will create a burr. See that little pin that dropped out? It's another critical part. Right? That little burr that forms on the shaft, see right now? I don't even see a flat, a real flat spot on the shaft. See, there's just that little dent where the grub screw was. I don't know if you guys can see that tiny little dent where the grub screw was, right about there. Well, if that turns into a burr, you've got two main problems. One of them is getting the hex off at all, which I found on mine. My hex just won't come off; it just won't. And the second one is to getting this to push through so that you can get the bearings and everything out. Because if it doesn't want to come through because it's got a little burr, okay, see that? It won't come through the bearing. This is a brand new one. Can't get it apart. Okay. So, how would I address that? I would want to file a tiny flat spot there so that where it socks down, you know, otherwise, you're going to always have the same problem over and over. But doing something like that really accurately, really nicely, is kind of tricky. You can see there's that little tiny bright spot right there. That's the burr mark. It won't let it get through the bearing. When I try and push it through, that burr catches on the bearing. So I need to take that and dress that down with one of my little tiny diamond files so that it'll actually pass through. And I think it would be well worth the time just to put a tiny little flat there, but I'm not really sure how long that would help. Because the minute the grub screw gets loose, it's going to want to spin back and forth, it's going to create burrs. Really the way to do is to keep that grub screw tight. This is just one of the peculiarities of the Red, Red Cat design, in my opinion. It's just kind of weird. I suppose you could run without the grub screw and just uh, replace the entire hex with a, a conventional hex. You see them on eBay all the time, 12 millimeter hex. They have bigger pens that go wider, go all the way through just about. And uh, yeah, this has got a lot of little weird milling details on it, which make it fit the Red Cat parts perfectly. It fits in there awesome because there's all those little mold marks that receive it. But to run wheel wideners, we got to get rid of that because it will not seat properly. See how high up it sits? It's just barely engaging in there. Very amount of slop, too. To stop that slop, you're going to need friction. The only way you're going to get friction is to have face to face contact. The only way you're going to get face to face contact is to flat take it down. And I wanted to show you this because this is another little thing that will bite you in the ass later and you won't be able to get. You replace your bearings. Now in this case I don't have to do anything to this. I can just leave this alone. But if I wanted to get that out of there I wouldn't be able to unless I dressed it down. Alright. Okay, more micro mods before I got my hands oily or whatever. Um, using this tool right here which gives me a nice thing to gauge flatness by in a sense. I ran it down on the, you know, thing there, and then I just hand sanded it till I got it perfectly flat. Perfectly flat is what you're after. You don't want this thing to be cockeyed, man. So it's got to be perfectly flat, and then it'll engage in here. 100%. See, now we got some. Now we got really nice engagement. Without that, we've got partial engagement when it's just rocking around on the I can get it in there a little bit there, see so we go from that which is like nothing engaging to all the way 
flush with it, which is what you want. And this will give you that much more axle. Really nice. So I got three more of these babies to do. Do not want to screw them up. Let me get that out of my hair while I'm focused on it. Get these guys ready to reassemble on the knuckles and whatnot. And then I'll tear into this last gear case. Almost ready to turn to the axle. I started unscrewing and I thought, you know what, I'm going to get into this and greased up again. I need to address the little burr thingy that was bugging me on this. So, got up a little diamond file. I dress down the tiny little burr. Now it'll come out, which is a good thing. It's supposed to come out. Okay. And here's the two bearings that you'll need to be replacing one day. There's a big skinny one and a little fat one. And they're listed in the Red Cat manual, which you can access online. So you have no excuse not to know exactly what size those are if you're so interested. So now, do uh, just show you how this is going to work. I'm going to get this guy set up in here, which I can't do one-handed. I'm going to dress this little bright spot that I've made. I'm going to dress it down just a touch and make it a little bit of a flat. Give the grub screw a little more of something to bite onto without making a burr. Okay, so clamped it in the little vise here. Hit it up with the file. I used the guide of the vise to keep me from going in too far. You know, clamped it up so that I couldn't get to it. Keep me from messing it up. And the deal is, this little guy here, you just arrange it so the grub screw. See that little raised portion? That little raised portion sits on the inner bearing race. That's why it's got that. Very nice. Okay. Cat is having a conniption fit over something. I don't know what. Don't really care. Right now. Not into cats right now. Maybe later. Okay. I wish this camera could show you, but maybe you can see, maybe you cannot. But it the basically the flat I made would give a place for the grub screw to land, but you see the flat is not all the way down to the diameter of the axle. I wanted to leave some meat there because that's also the edge of where the little hole is. So you got not a whole lot to work with, but it does create a flat for the grub screw. So I can reassemble that, put that to the side. Three more of them. Next thing to do is take a tiny, tiny little Allen wrench. I don't know what size it is. It's just the one that fits. You take these things out. These get loose, too. They get loose, and they shatter. And when they shatter, a little piece goes into your gear case and chews stuff up. Or any hardened pens can go into these drive cups. You've got to do the changeover to the steel gear. That's really heavy. Interesting. So, you take the, the grub screws out. They're not really grub screws. They're weird looking little pens with a threaded head, like a grub screw. They're brittle. These were so loose, I could just spin them right out. Take those off. Okay. You're going to see there's a, a bearing on a little plastic shaft. Well, you're going to reuse that. You don't have to do anything to that. There's a bearing over here that's going to go on the other side of this shaft. It'll be easier once I push the shaft out, which can't happen until these four little screws come out. The four little itsy bitsy screws out, theoretically, I'll be able to do this one handed. And there's a thrust plate that's a separate part. I can't get it. See this, this back part? The thrust plate, there's going to be a pen or something. Yeah, another ubiquitous pen. This one's different than the others. It's longer. I'm going to leave it right there. What strikes me odd is that they don't have a metal thrust plate. They don't. You use the plastic thrust plate, then you use the itty bitty self tapping screws. See? Doesn't that seem odd? Wouldn't you want to have a machine metal part and machine screws? And so you go to all this trouble putting in the steel gear set and you're stuck with a little metal, a little plastic part here. <laughs> yeah. So, got the little hardened pen, Crawford Performance Engineering. Things are expensive, man. Over 
dollar fifty a piece or two dollars a piece by the time you pay shipping. Uh, I used three thirty second roll pins. I drilled mine out, put in a roll pin, trimmed it off, and I knew that thing was never ever going to come out. It was in there for real. This drive pin is so loose. Can you see it flopping back and forth? That's how that drive pin is going to operate inside the transmission. Just flop back and forth like that. Rub around on the inside of the axle housing. Just rub around in there. Give you partial engagement. Now it's engaged on one side of the cup. Now it's engaged on the other side of the cup until it gets kinked or burred. So let's say it's all the way out and you stress up your axle. You put a little burr in it. Now it's stuck all the way out, so now you got partial engagement. These are crap. I don't know why anybody would recommend these. This is completely unacceptable. That's not even... That's not a friction fit. That's not even close to a friction fit. I want a pen that drives in there and deforms the threads in the cup and s gets stuck in there until I drive it out. Alright, back to the action. I'm over having my hissy fit but the hardened pen's not working out. Okay, so let's have a look at the the roll pin mod. You get a pack of these roll pins. They sell the basic same pack at all the auto parts stores. You're only going to get three pins in the whole pack that are going to be the size you want, three thirty seconds. Luckily, these long ones are long enough to do two if you're careful of how you cut them off and you don't make a giant mess of it. If you were to drill it too large, then the, the frick, there's no friction. It's got to be slightly undersized. So this is a, a number six tapping bit. So this size, I think it's a number 36 or 29 or something like that. I don't know. It's the one that comes with the taps. That works using the brass hammer so we don't damage the pen. Hopefully I can get this to go all the way I want. At this point, I can still lift this one off and keep going with it. Let's do that. Nip it off. There's just a little bit left, and then see if I can press it in that way. All right, get out the big Dremel. Isn't this fun, guys? The micro mod. It's taking the whole camera's memory card up. Yay! <laughs> sides now and crimped off. It's more or less a very permanent type of thing now. It's good. So you have to replace that bearing and it's very, very bad. <laughs> you can always slip it off this side. I'm going to try not to, to do have that debacle on this side. But that's the roll pin mod. You got to do what you got to do, man. You got to run over to AutoZone and buy some 332nd pens and drill a hole and jam them in there. Do it! Get everything happening here. I've already mounted the uh, 10 tooth pinion to the motor. Got that cinched down. The motor is there where I can still move it around a little bit. First thing I do is I kind of pull it back a little bit. Then I put the big the big guy goes in. Right? First we, we want to slather these up just a little bit. I'll go ahead and show you my slathering technique really nothing to it. All I do is I just I just rub it into the threads, I mean into the teeth of the gear. No big deal. And around in here. It's going to get spread all around, especially this red and tacky. It gets transferred from tooth to tooth really nice. Put a little on the face where it rubs. Okay. It's lovely. Slap that bad boy in there. Okay. Huh? 
same with the same. Let's get a little of the red and tacky all over everything. Very nice. The new bearings are already in. They just press right in very nice. Okay. And this guy goes like this. Okay. Make sure all your bearings have gone in and everything's okay. Okay, have something to wipe your hands on. So you get grease all over everything. That's later. Getting grease all over everything is later, not now. I don't want to do that now. I don't want to do that now. It's later. So now you can see right through the thingamabob and you just set your lash to where it looks right. You rock the motor back and forth. You get the teeth into nice contact. And then you get in there and tighten the motor. Screws down. Get a good look at it. Looks like good contact through eye, but you still got to check out the uh, how the spur came in. These have all been uh, roll pin modded. Very nice. Everything's good to go now. Once these go together, they can stay together for the duration. I don't foresee these getting opened up again anytime soon. Okay. Right. And what I like to do now. Is I like to drop the gear in, okay, and then run it back and forth and watch it and see is it pushing the pinion back? Is it flexing? Is it making good engagement? Is the pinion too high? Is the pinion too low? Okay, I like to have the pinion set up about a 30 second past the gears, not flush with it, because this motor will move back and forth. Motor has a 16th of motion, probably. You just want everything to track nice, everything's looking good, everything's spinning around good. At this point, first thing I do is I put the I put the case back together. I put the four screws on the case, obviously. You don't want the damn thing falling apart. But there's three screws here and there's one longer screw here. And you get those babies in there. I'm really loving this little magnetic uh, screw catcher that my friend Painful13 sent me out of the blue just because he loves me so much. That was very kind of you, sir. I use it all the time. Okay. Getting grease everywhere. So, at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the red and tacky out with my little rubber squeegee. I'm going to fill these guys up halfway, stick them up there. I'm going to fill this up halfway, put it on this way. Unless you want your motor sticking out in front for some reason. The whole thing will snap together and get screwed together with the little screws. No big deal. The way I'm going to approach this, before I run out of camera time here, yapping, blah, 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 blah. Just going to uh, butter these babies up like this. Okay, that's it. You're looking at it. Real high tech waterproofing. Okay. The idea is to keep the water from getting all the way up into the gear case. Okay, and then I'm going to slip on a bone, give the dog a bone. Oh yeah. Lay the bone down. Laying down some bone. Sounds too good to be true. I have finally reached that point. Pack this baby, slather it up, spread it off like a nice English muffin. Ah, so messy, so much fun. Slap that on there. Squish. Crap will come out <laughs> everywhere. So much fun. Then, repeat the process on this side. Slap away, man. Get the old rubber spatula out. All right, a little update on the progress here. Before I got the axles completely put together, which they are just about completely put together, um, I needed to mod the these little posts that the servos mount to. I just took them over here on the sander and uh, sanded it on down and then I test fit with the, the servo and you can see you just got to take about a sixteenth off to get it to, to fit in there. So Now they'll fit just perfectly. And I can go ahead and install these on the axle with my remaining hardware, which is shrinking down. Uh, I just wanted to point out I used the nice stainless uh, button heads because I, I measured for all the different hardware for the links and everything. 
some of it actually will work. I was kind of complaining earlier that, oh, I bought all this hardware, it's not going to work because I'm using Lexan instead of aluminum. That's partly true. Some of it's for links and stuff, and it will work. So we'll have some nice looking hardware on here. Uh, pretty excited about this point because once I get these guys screwed on and I can completely clean up everything and get a workspace back because it's gotten kind of chaotic as usual and then work on bending links. Hey okay, guys, some hard won progress. Here's these nice little axles, man. These are looking good. Really good. Use my link bender. Put in nice regular bends. They're both exactly the same. Let's put them side by side so you can see how nice that is. My client is sending servo horns, aluminum clamping servo horns, so we'll be able to upgrade those pretty soon. You can see I've got everything attached with the nice stainless button heads. Mmm. I'm going to reuse the uh, Red Cat links. I popped in uh, new Revo balls, the big balls, so we can use the three millimeters to attach it to the chassis. So now it's just a matter of taking this nice looking piece of aluminum here and uh, seeing if this is the right material to use for the links. This is from a different source. Uh, the last aluminum I got was from McMaster. Real hard. Really nice. This is T6-60-61, uh, but I, I don't know if it's the same hardness as the uh, McMaster rods or not. I'm out of that material. Cut them, bend them, put threads on them, put starter threads using tap, not all the way, just the starters, just to get them going. That's what seems to work best with these. If you go all the way in and all the way out, it's a loose fit. If you just start them and make the threads bite into the plastic, it really grabs them good. These are the tracks of 5347 Revo large ends, 3 millimeter. So let's get to it, man. 